This meeting today is a little bit different because it's not to say so much about the happenings around me or Benue State or the country, Nigeria, uh, but it's to first of all to appreciate the media and thank them for the support that uh, you gave me during my trying period. One thing you did not spare was to let Nigerians be in the dark about what was happening in Benue State and the persecution, the travails, and the pains that we had. You told not just Nigerians, the whole world, and they all rose to the occasion and condemned what was happening. And today, we appreciate the federal government to providing security that today in Benue State we have relative peace and uh, uh, to appreciate Nigerians for the maximum support they give me. My words of encouragement through text messages and through personal calls and through visits and all that. We were encouraged. And like what we started in 2016, when we discovered that there were issues with uh, herdsmen and farmers, we came out and took the bull by the horn because we had researched and uh, discovered that globally uh, the best method of animal husbandry is through ranching. Because today we talk about so many heads of cattle in Nigeria, but we do not care about the statistics. But from records available to me, the total heads of cattle in Nigeria that are creating so much tension and divisions, and even uh, bringing drums of war in our country, Nigeria, are just above 20 million heads of cattle. But on record, we have over 300 million heads of cattle in India, in Brazil, over 250 million heads of cattle, in America, over 100 million. Even in South Africa, the number of cattle they have is more than what we have there, and like countries like Kenya and so on. But why they have lived peacefully with farmers is because they ranch. And so we came out with a policy, and we don't just talk at a policy level, we went ahead, legislated and enacted a law prohibiting open grazing. And uh, we were called names. And uh, we were castigated, and all manner of people who did not have the love of this country, who did not care about the unity of our country, who did not care about our fellow human beings living in Nigeria, who were being killed, my aunt, our women were raped, our children were also raped and killed, our old men, that nobody was spared. And so, as a government that has the responsibility of providing security for lives and property, we came out with that legislation. And by the grace of God, pessimists and skeptics today, they have accepted that truly what we started in 2016 have become a model for the entire country. I commend my colleagues, the Northern Governors Forum, particularly the chairman of Northern Governors Forum, for accepting that ranching remains the only solution to bring peace for our people in our country, Nigeria. I appreciate my colleagues from the South who 
are also in agreement that ranching remains the best method. And like I said, there is no other way we cannot run away from this fact because statistics also show that in the 50s, when there was a policy on open grazing and provision for uh, grazing areas and cattle routes and all that, what was the total population of Nigeria? Less than 40 million. Today, Nigeria is over 60 million, over 200 million. And by that alone, if you want to be truthful to yourself, the land has not increased. We have not annexed any other country to join to Nigeria to have excess land to be able to take care of the people, over 200 million people, and also to take care of the cattle doing open grazing all over the place because of human activities. There are more schools than what we saw in the 50s today. There are more markets, there are more settlements, there are more farming activities going on. And so no land for open grazing. So when we said we had to enact a law, we meant good business for farmers and good business for herdsmen, that they can live in peace and work together. It wasn't about sentiment. I'm not against any Fulani man. There are Fulani men in my government. There are Fulani men in my own personal farm that are rearing cattle for me. And so not sentiments that I have. I have this long-standing relationship with several uh, Fulani people, including my friend in Zaria, who is a Fulani man from Katsina. That in the course of my Chekwa Academy history, I was in ABU Zaria with my wife and he had to relinquish his bedroom for me and my wife. And up to today, since 1994, we have maintained that cordial relationship and we are friends. He visits me and I do the same. So it is not about ethnicity sentiment. It is about our country. And those people who feel that Samuel Tom should not make comments on national issues, Maybe they are ignorant about my position and stake in this country. Apart from being governor of Benue State, I'm a member of National Council of State in this country. And I'm also a member of National Economic Council. And I'm also a member of Nigeria Governors Forum. <laughs> so that alone bestows on me the right to comment on national issues. We own this country, all of us. Tibman, Idomaman, Igedeman, Hausaman, Yorubaman, Iboman, Fulaniman, all of us, this country belongs to us. The only thing we are saying is that we who are here, we should be accorded respect and honor and peace to stay here. And we are saying that the primary responsibility of any responsible government is to provide security for lives and property. And today, like I said, it's not to talk about so many other things. I appreciate our people, I appreciate all of you, the media, and to say that I am 100% with my people. As you can see, my members here who are in town are here for us to always compare notes and see how we can make Benue state greater and Nigeria greater. And so I have their confidence. And whenever I speak, I had consulted before making any speech. And when I speak, I speak for the majority of the people of my state, and I speak for majority of other people in this country too. And I think that the media have done so well by ensuring that um, our messages get across. 
And today is more of celebration because those who never believed in ranching have accepted that truly what we saw in 2016 has, is the only way to bring peace for farmers and uh, uh, herdsmen. So I believe that the federal government we also respond to the issues I have raised some few days ago and ensure we have peace. Because I'm concerned with the happenings in the country that if a state of emergency is not declared on security in this country, we may wake up one day and discover that we have no com country. And the worst thing is that most or almost all the herdsmen who are terrorizing this country, they are not even Nigerians. I have said this several times. Mr. President also admitted this when he visited United Arab Emirates and confirmed that truly those herdsmen with arms are not Nigerians. They are from Chad, they are from Mali, they are from Senegal, they are from other countries. But Nigeria cannot continue like this. We must have policies that will regulate foreigners from coming into our country. Because no country will fall these arms and wait for armed people to come in, terrorize your people, kill them, miam them rape their women and their children, and then send them away from their ancestral lands. No country will accept that. We are not in the Banana Republic, and so we must work together. So whatever I say is meant for the good of all. It has no sentiments whatsoever. But all that I want to do is to ensure that I took an oath of office and I think that every one of us in this country who is a leader today and are taking oath of office should go back and read the contents of the oath of office that we took and see the gravity of the uh, offense that we are committing, not just against humanity, but against God, so that we amend our ways and, for God's sake, ensure equity, fairness, justice for all people of this uh, uh, country. I believe that I have written to Mr. President and he will give attention to those issues that are raised a few days ago so that Nigeria will get back on track. This is not about sentiments of party or ethnicity or any other thing, but it's being born out of patriotism and to ensure that we have a country. It's not about who is what and that tomorrow, but it is about the sustainability of us as a country, as Nigeria. And so I want to commend you. You have been outspoken. You have been speaking the minds of Nigerians and continue to do it because we have no other country other than Nigeria. And no one will want us to be like war-ravaged countries like Syria, like Rwanda, like all those other countries that today they cannot put themselves together. And so let us continue. Like the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's only when you say the truth that you will be free. So once again, I want to commend and to appreciate all of you for standing with us and for standing with us through your various publications and um, media outings to support ranching. And today, ranching have become a reality that the entire Nigeria is in support of ranching our cattle. So that we shall have peace. Uh, I'm just one state in um, uh, the Middle Belt. But as a leader, 
I can say that that is not on my table for now. And until that time comes, when we get to the river, we'll know what method we're going to cross. <laughs> Whether we're going to use canoe or we pass on the bridge or we swim, if you have the capacity. So uh, I cannot on my own decide whether uh, the middle bed should contest presidency or not. But I think that it is too early to be talking about uh, 2023, when we still have up to two years and four months. I think what Nigeria needs now is uh, dividends of democracy. And that should include especially security for lives and property. As I talk to you now, I will be a madman to be talking about 2023. And if anybody comes to me to tell me about 2023, I will send you away from my uh, office. There is no reason. As I talk to you, I have more than 800,000 IDPs in primary school. And they are stopping our children from going to school. These people are suffering on the lean resources of the government and from other charitable organizations and good spirited uh, individuals who have come out to support. And it's with pains. One man with four wives in an IDP camp that is not suitable for dogs to live in. And we don't have the resources to cater for these people. People cannot go to their farms. Those who are tempted were killed. Women were raped and their hands chopped off. And several evils are being committed. So my primary concern now as a leader, if you ask me, and as a stakeholder in this country, is for the federal government, state, and local government to put us together to end the level of insecurity that is going on in our country. Because without security, there can be no meaningful development. As I talk to you, there is food crisis in Benue State and other parts of this country. And of course, you knew that uh, the early stoppage of rain have also created its own challenge about food security. And then but the, the, the critical one is this one, that people cannot just go to the farms. They cannot move freely. And are eating deep into the budgets of those, their children that are in urban areas, who are civil servants, who are business people, and so on. So for me, it's not about 2023. Let us use what we have now. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. We may wake up tomorrow if nothing is done to check this menace of security that is going on. Tomorrow we may not have a Nigeria to contest presidency or governor or senator or house of reps. The issue of rotation. I think that all this issue of rotation and so on, when that time comes, Nigerians will sit together. They will talk about history. They will talk about promises that were made. They will talk about gentleman's agreement that were rich. And then decide. For me, I will follow what Nigerians will want where the presidency will come to. But if you ask me my personal opinion, now, that should not be a problem to us. Since democracy came in, we have been rotating presidency. So it's a matter of various political parties to decide where they want their president to come from. And if you decide to make a wrong choice by choosing where your president will come to, you will lose out. And it's as simple as that. So that is not a problem. But like I said, this is not the time for it. When that time comes, we'll decide on what to do. I've always said that the issue of uh, ECOWAS protocol were being just used as a smoke screen to see how some people here can drive the Fulani agenda, Hairsman agenda. 
like I said, it's not, we're not talking about uh, uh, ethnicity here. I'm not talking about Fulani men who have cohabited with us. We have lived together and have been working together. We have no problem until these foreign Fulani men started coming in. And they have not hidden the agenda for this country, Nigeria. They say that Allah has given them Nigeria. Nigeria belongs to them. And everyone who is living here must work according to his details. Otherwise, you'd be prepared to go somewhere else. That Nigeria belongs to them. That they have the right. And they have not hidden it. They have had press conferences. You are aware. You have online testimonies of what these people have said. And that is why I keep calling for the arrest and prosecution of uh, Mayeti Allah. Because they are the one anchoring these foreign Fulani hairsmen, and they come out swiftly to defend them until these people are arrested. Because it is not right to allow just hairsmen to come in in the name of ECOWAS protocol. I have also read the ECOWAS protocols and given to my lawyers to also read. There are procedures to follow before you come into Nigeria. You must profile those who are coming in, including their cattle. You will profile them. Have they been following it? So this is the point. And I agree with the National Assembly uh, if they, uh, as they have now risen up to their responsibility because we have been calling on them to. And I'm happy that they are also taking steps. We must review the ECOWAS protocol because it does not favor us for now. Ghana did it. If you go to Ghana, Ghana, our neighbors here, they don't have open grazing because of the menace that was being caused by these Fulani hairsmen. And so even Bene Republic, they did same. So why can't us giants of Africa, they are ranching in a, 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 a Kenya, South Africa, and other countries, why can't we do it here? So those ECOWAS protocol must be reviewed for us to have a better policy to regulate uh, cattle in this country. The president, as our leader, is not doing well. That is why I'm calling on him to step up his action and act faster than the way is being done right now. Declare state of emergency on security so that all resources and all strength will be channeled towards ensuring that we have security for lives and property in this country. Because for now, everything is in disarray. And without security, there can be no meaningful development. And so the presidency is not doing well. That is why I had to write to him. That is why I have to uh, open up and publicly declare that the president must come out and take steps that will redeem his image. President Buhari served this country as a military head of state. And Nigerians appreciated him for who he was. And that was why overwhelmingly he was voted into power in 2015. But honestly, what is happening now, the body language shows clearly that he is not the president who is supposed to be the president of everybody but for nobody. It is clear to me that the president is the president who is the president for everybody and for some people. <laughs> so this is the challenge I have. But when you talk about these things, I saw some sponsored media outings that talk about performance of Otom. I'm doing well, just like any other government uh, governor in this country. And I'm working with my people. My people appreciate me. In terms of infrastructure, go to Benue, you see it. Since I left APC, I've been a performing governor. <laughs> go there and see. It.
Anybody who wants can go to Benue State. Let my media people take you around. And in terms of payment of salaries, since 2018, I have not failed in paying salaries. And it's not 50%, oh, 100%. <laughs> and Benue State is the third state that is paying the highest salary, apart from Lagos and River State. So when you come to bring those barefooted arguments that uh, Otom have not done anything, come to Benway State, you have not been there. It's just that I'm publicity shy. That is why you don't see those things. <laughs> so, so instead of addressing those issues, I'm in politics. Since 1983, I've been in this game. So when you go and sponsor some people to come and address me and say, oh, Tom, I've not done it, you go and pay salaries. I've been paying salaries, talk about all that. Address those issues that I'm raising, which are very genuine. That is the point. I think that those who chose to misunderstand me when we started this uh, ranching policy and enactment of law prohibiting open grazing and providing ranching, I think they have come to terms now. You are part of the media. You knew the attack that I had. There was no one coming out to openly support me in those days about the law uh, which we enacted. Rather, it was castigation. But I think that now that uh, most of them have eaten back their words, and they are accepting the superior policy and law which are brought to restore peace for herdsmen and farmers. I applaud them. I appreciate them. We are together. I am also a fallible human being. I am subject to mistakes. And so if someone brings a superior argument, I am ready to take it for the good of all. And I think that that is what uh, most of the people who were attacking me, they were completely ignorant about how deep I researched and brought a policy that will help this country, as they have accepted it now. So I commend them for coming out boldly to accept that. I think that is the spirit that all of us should imbibe. So it's not just about ego. You know? If you don't know something, accept that truly, my brother, I didn't know. And that alone is okay. So there is no issue of uh, the, the second question. I, I don't think uh, it's right for anybody to suggest that the federal government will come against me. I did not insult Mr. President. I did not castigate him. I only told him the bitter truth, even in my letter. I commended Mr. President for the steps he has taken that have brought related peace to us in Benue State. That is commendable. I also commended him on certain areas that he did in terms of infrastructure and all that that are worthy of note, and I appreciate him for that. But at the same time, I cannot hide away from the truth. Like I said, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I will be doing injustice to myself and to my children and to my generation and especially the Benue people who voted me by not saying the truth. All that I'm saying is to ensure equity, fairness and justice for everybody and for Mr. President too. And like I said, maybe all these things are happening. Mr. President may not be aware. That is why I decided to bring it to his notice. So that he will be aware. And I believe that the Buhari I know, as a former military head of state, and the one that was voted into power, Buhari will rise up to this uh, uh, challenge. But to say I should not say the truth, that won't be far from me. You know me very well. I have never hidden the truth. Especially when it comes to issues of equity, fairness, and justice. You die once now. Whatever happened, if I die today, am I the first person to die? Will I be the last person to die? So what is it? I say, man, you have to stand by the truth. But the truth cannot be hidden. No matter how long it takes, one day it will come out. When Abiola was honored here, 
as the president-elect on June 12. I made a statement for some of you who heard me. I said something. Then it was at the heat of castigation and criticism and vilification about my person for enacting a law to Benue people to stop the crisis that was going on. And I said something, I said, look, just like June 12 was aborted and Biola was arrested and today we are honoring him. One day, Nigerians will appreciate and honor prohibition of open grazing and provision for ranching in this country. And you know, I'm not a prophet, but the Bible says the test of a true prophet is that whatever he said shall come to pass. <laughs> so if I say that uh, today is happening, what do you think about me? <laughs> Am I a prophet or not? <laughs> so thank you very much. We have arrested over 400 herdsmen. And these are not just Fulanese. Even indigenous people. Thief, Idoma, and Igede, back home in Benue State. Those who trespass against this law are arrested. And this also includes the issue of cattle rustling. Because it's part of the law. If you rustle cattle, you will be prosecuted. You will be arrested and prosecuted. So you can see that our law took care of every stakeholder who is doing animal husbandry. And we have convicted over 150 of those we have arrested. Some, the process of prosecution is ongoing. Some of these people that were convicted, they were required to pay fines. That they did and were freed. Some are still in Makudi Correctional Center, as I talked to you. And the other ones are in the process. Some are being investigated, those that were arrested. And um, we have arrested over 12,000 heads of cattle. And every cattle arrested by trespassing on our land is required to pay a fine on each cattle. And that we have been doing. And where the owners do not come to collect those cattle, we are permitted by our law to auction them or to give it to charitable uh, organization. And so that is what we have been doing. Our livestock guards are working, and I must commend the security agencies. They've been wonderful. If not for the support that we have from security agencies, it would have been impossible to implement this. But with their support, we've been able to apprehend all those who have trespassed on our law. So it is uh, a success story, and uh, we appreciate God for helping us uh, thus far. Once again, thank you very much, and God bless you all.